Hey everybody, um, this video here is on uh, Phil Peace SD PS and Paul 2 dual induct psychrometer unit. And I'm just going to kind of briefly go over um, you know, some of the things I like about it. Uh, well, not some of the things, I, everything I like about it uh, for the most part. Um, it comes with a case uh, for the unit. Uh, these uh, duck, uh, these cones. You know, you can use to set your wands in. Two wands. Uh, red was marked for your return. Uh, the plain ones marked for your supply. And and of course, you know the instruction manual. Um, it also has a rubberized case um, that pretty much protects the unit. You know, very solid case. Has a magnetic hang hangle. I mean, ma magnetic hanger. So you can stick it across any ductwork for the most part, and uh, it will stay, you know, in place. Um, once you turn it on, you kind of have to give it uh, a time for it to, uh, you know, cycle through. And as you can see, if you can see it, it says probe. Let me see if I can. It says probe, so it's just letting you know if, if there are any probes inserted, um, it will display the word probe. Uh, with this here, you know, you can you know, naturally measure your dry bulb wet plug dry bulb wet bulb dew point and your supply and oil your return um, it also helps calculate your enthalpy and uh, your BTUs um, that your that your unit is producing and also uh, humidity relative humidity uh, that is going on um, either in your supply or return uh, and I was using this last night because um, I you know, noticed that the um, um, humidifier, system humidifier that I have is an old humidifier uh, made by Scuttle. And those of you that are familiar with Scuttle, you know, those units are, are pretty small. Um, and I wanted to see you know, whether or not if that little small unit was able to produce enough humidity uh, from my home. Now granted, my home does have a lot of infiltration and exfiltration because uh, it's a very old home. It's uh, almost 70 plus years old. Um, our family has been living here. So it has had some updates and stuff like that, but I know uh, air is you know, coming in and coming out of the house uh, um, are pretty well. Um, so there are times when, you know, especially during this winter time, I had to turn up the humidistat on my uh, a scuttle uh, humidifier. Uh, f fortunately, unfortunately, you know, my humidifier allows you to go up to 70% humidity. Um, and for the most part, the majority of the winter, I've kept it set at 60, but you know, it, the house still felt kind of dry um, uh, throughout the day. Um, I would leave my fan on, on running continuously. Uh, there are times when uh, the system would come on, then the uh, uh, humidifier would come on only when the heat came on. Uh, then I decided to kind of change things up, and um, since I had I had my furnace changed out about seven years ago, and the installers then uh, they didn't leave the transformer that was for the scuttle you know humidifier, and plus they didn't hook it up either. So um, they gave me some BS excuse, which at the time I didn't know because I wasn't in the HVAC field. Um, that you know my new system wouldn't need a you know uh, a humidifier. So of course after going to school and um, you know, jumping into this industry, I, re I realized that what they told me was a bunch of BS. Uh, their install work was good, but you know there are some other things that they re they just pretty much didn't really know about. So um, initially I hooked up my scuttle uh, to come on whenever the heat came on. And it did. It worked, you know, got it working and everything like that. And the air still felt kind of dry. And so, to make a long story short, I decided to rewire it so that way uh, I received constant 24 volt power and that it would come on on its own whenever it, you know, measured the humidity level low uh, going on throughout the house since I, you know, need my fan running continuously. So, with this piece right here, um, I was able to uh, check the humidity, you know, in the supply to return, 
and actually I had to drill an extra hole on my return side because I realized the initial hole that I had was below where the humidifier was. So I had to drill another hole on the return side higher or actually before the humidifier to kind of get a more accurate reading as to how much humidity was in the house. And uh, for the most part I was getting you know, close to 50% you know, humidity and that's after I set my humidistat to 60% you know, um, um, humidity um, on the return. Now on the supply, <coughs> which maybe someone, someone out there can answer for me, um, on the supply when, when the heat was off you know, I was getting, you know, you know, 50%, you know, um, um, humidity. Actually, the, the humidity in the, in the supply was a little bit lower than you no know, humidity in return, understandably. Um, but then when the heat would come on, it would drop down to like 11 or 12, you know, uh, percent humidity. You know, when the heat, when the heat kicked on. And then when the heat was off, it would jump right back up. So, that kind of had me scratching my head for a second because I'm thinking, you know, if, if you're adding moisture to the air, you know, that moisture, um, um, you know, should remain, you know, throughout until it comes out the register. But then it had me thinking, maybe when the heat is on, that heat exchanger is actually boiling off that humidity that's going into the system. So basically, not so much as um, uh, forcing that humidity to become steam. And then when it exits out of the register, it cools off again, and then you know the uh, humidity level builds back up in the house. But you know maybe somebody in, in, in YouTube land can answer that for me. Um, the cool thing about this uh, SDP2 is that it is a wireless device, so I can sync this with my with my HVAC guide if I wanted to. I'm sorry, sync with my HVAC guide if I want to. Um, uh, Know, record you know measurements you know uh, throughout a particular time or if I am outside with my S Man 4 the manifold and I want to record my um, uh, indoor wet ball you know as a return I can sync uh, the return probe I can sync the return probe readings you know with my S Man 4 uh, send to it you know the indoor wet bulb and you know calculate the outdoor dry bulb or measure the outdoor drive bulb and then punch, punch those numbers in my S-Man 4. So, you know, this is a great, great tool to have. Um, you, know, you know, very accurate for the most part. Uh, I haven't had any issues, you know, you know with this. Um, like I said, it too comes in a big, huge case. So, basically, especially with these wands, you definitely want to protect these wands. Um, uh, you know, the uh, material, the, the build quality on these wands are very great. Um, you know, that's like you just gotta keep in mind that when you let me see, when you're let me zoom out here so you can see a little better. Okay, basically when you're extending or retracting that this cable here at the bottom is not obstructed. Okay, so you know, like some people have, in myself included, you know, you want to rest this against your body. Okay, when you pull this thing down to collapse it. Well, when you pull this thing down, the cord here doesn't have anywhere to go. So you wind up kinking the cord and also damaging your wand. So when you close this, make sure you use both hands. Keep the end, uh, this end uh, clear. So that way when you collapse it, the cord comes out. Okay, and also keep in mind when you're extending it that, you know, don't leave your... your Don't remember. Don't leave your cord bunched up, you know, because you try to pull this. As you're extending this, you're pulling the cord into the body. So you know you don't want this bunched up, and then it gets here and it gets jammed and stuff like that. So just remember, unwind, loosen it first, then extend it. Okay. And even though you may not be able to see very well, it has a flat side. Um, so when you stick it inside, you know, uh, the duct, or when you stick it inside one of these cones. You know, you can kind of run your fingers across and keep the uh, sensor straight in the direction where you want it to measure the airflow. Uh, it does have a built-in light. I don't know if you were able to see it earlier. Hold on a second here. Let's see, maybe you can see. Hold on. There we go. Light. No light. Light. 
no light. These things great. Okay, so that is it in a nutshell. Um, I may do another YouTube video um, with this actually connected to my uh, furnace here in the in the basement. You know, just to kind of you know let you see um, you know this in action. Uh, so right now these uh, sets of videos are just pretty much introductory of um, each uh, accessory piece that I have or equipment that I have, and. Um, no, my thoughts on it and the like. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, write back to me and I'll be happy to answer. Bye.